For once again, the national movement beckoned them both. Gandhi had launched the Quit India movement. Every national leader of any consequence was arrested. For a time, Firoz and Indira went underground, but she was discovered and locked up in Naini jail. This was her first experience of prison, and she began to understand not only what her parents had suffered, but what tens of thousands of freedom fighters underwent in the cause of India's freedom. Each raindrop was a moment of loneliness, and each was a moment closer to freedom. It was in this very jail that Jawaharlal had first begun his series of letters to her. Unfortunately, he was imprisoned in the Ahmednagar fort, a thousand miles away. It was here that he wrote the discovery of India. In Indira's words, my father's three books. Glimpses of world history, an autobiography, and the discovery of India have been my companions through life. After the Second World War had ended, Lord Mountbatten, who came as Viceroy, was in a hurry. He set a deadline for the resolution of different points of view and the transfer of power. Much to the sorrow of all nationalists, Mr. Jinnah and the Muslim League were adamant in their demand for Pakistan, and the partition of India became inevitable. Jawaharlal Nehru was elected India's first Prime Minister, and the British Raj came to an end. It is a cruel irony of history that the leader who refused to compromise on the unity of India should have lived to see the horrors of partition. That the Mahatma who dedicated his life to non-violence and moderation should have been killed by an assassin's bullet. On that day, hope was eclipsed for all of India especially so for those who were personally close to Bapu. Jawaharlal was stunned. And deeply as they grieved within themselves, Firoz and Indira gave him comfort and strength. By now, Firoz and Indira had two sons, Rajiv and Sanjay. They had set up their home in Lucknow, where Feroz was managing director of the National Herald. It was a happy time for the parents, but as always, Indira's personal life was interrupted again by political necessity. Jawaharlal was alone in Delhi. He needed an official hostess and a confidant to assist him in his tasks as Prime Minister. Indira herself writes, that it was extremely tiring to shuttle back and forth between Lucknow and Delhi frequently. Feroz became a member of the Constituent Assembly and was later elected to Parliament. He shifted to Delhi and that made life easier for Indira. Indira travelled with Jawaharlal to various parts of India looking into the problems of rural and tribal people. They visited India's neighbors and many countries of the world. These experiences were a further step in Indira's apprenticeship in understanding national and international problems. 
not only in terms of policy, but in terms of personal contact and exchange of ideas. Indira Gandhi was elected President of the Congress in 1959. Subsequently, she refused a second term because of her husband's health. Feroz Gandhi died in 1960. Not long after, Indira was to suffer another terrible blow when Jawaharlal died in 1964. The Indian people lost one of the most loved of men in India's history. Mr. Lal Bahadur Shastri became India's second Prime Minister. Mr. Shastri asked Mrs. Gandhi to join his cabinet, Minister for Information and Broadcasting. Unfortunately, after the 1965 war with Pakistan, as soon as Prime Minister Lal Bahadur Shastri signed a peace accord with President Ayub Khan in Tashkent, he passed away. India lost one of her humblest and most honorable of men, a friend, almost a guardian to Indira. It came as no surprise, therefore, that the Congress chose Mrs. Gandhi to be India's third Prime Minister. 